of Florida. It is state tournament week. I am here with Jake Campbell. Jake, how are things going? Things are good, man. A big week for the boys and the girls. Uh, it's going to be exciting times down in Kissimmee. Um, yeah, yeah. How I, I know you've been away from the mat a little bit, but I mean, what was this like week like kind of prepping the kids, getting ready? Uh, when I coached, right. I mean, we yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. When we focus, we just focus on us. I mean, that's the only thing you can control anyway, right. Just focus on your prep, you know, what you've done all year. I mean, we were, uh, we had such a good run at Tampa prep with state champs and, and all that. We just, we just focused on us. I know, um, a lot of times people freak out about the bracket. We'll always complain that they should seed this thing and all this other stuff, but control the controllables and that's just that's that's all we did and so we just prepped like it was just another day yeah so you know one of the things that i found really interesting is i've written fans guides for all these and and one of the things that that i always kind of i, I come back to you know obviously the team races are really inter interesting you know you look at kind of the youth movement and some of the classifications we'll talk about that but one of the things that always stuck with me and I know you had some studs at Tampa Prep, so maybe you didn't encounter this as much, but the kids who have come in who are seniors, who have been on the podium, but have never won a title before, did you have any of those? And what was kind of the message to those kids? Yeah, I mean, we had one that really sticks out for, for me, and uh, you probably remember him. He was our 113-pounder, Ben Bueller. Yeah. Right. He was a kid that was probably picked by you guys to win it two years in a row. And it just didn't work. And then his senior year, we got it to all come together. And I don't think he was actually picked to win it that year. I think the the LHP, I think it was uh, Waltman was picked to win it. Mm -hmm. And then we wrestled him in the finals and win it. So, yeah, I mean, you always have that senior that you just you want to it's, end it right. Right. That's all you think about. Let's just end this thing right. And uh, he was the one that sticks out the most. Yeah, well, and we're gonna have we're gonna talk about some brackets here in a little bit. Well, there's gonna be a lot of seniors, and there's only one spot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's only one opportunity to be on the top step. So, man, I I, I feel the pressure. I mean, I know I I coached several kids that it, it was very heartbreaking when they you know when that kind of yeah. came to an end. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's tough, man. I I think you just uh, you you touched on it. It's heartbreaking, but. Listen, if you've prepared the right way, um, you know, win or lose, you just, you know, you, you accept the result. And uh, uh, this sport teaches uh, you life lessons too, right? And so there is always something to take from it. Um, some of the kids I know that didn't win state titles for us are doctors, lawyers, and just fabulous humans. And a lot right. of them uh, talk about, you know, wrestling being a, a main reason why. I actually, funny you bring that up uh, about seniors, I, you know, follow a lot of wrestlers on LinkedIn, things like that. They're all, a lot of them that when I coach are now entering the workforce and uh, Alex Yuri, who wrestled for St. Thomas Aquinas. One of the things he posted on his LinkedIn was, you know, he was always favored to win it. And he got knocked off by one of those freshmen, his senior year by the name of Kyle Nordstrom, you know? And so um, it's kind of one of those things, right? It's just, uh, you know, but he talked, he talked about just, where his life is now and he and he thanked wrestling from it and the picture he posted was him laying on the mat and it's kyle flexing you know and so it's just yeah. amazing to see that i i tell anyone if you if you follow you know if you're in the workforce or not check out linkedin go to alex yuri it's a it's a it's a gut-wrenching i remember watching that match and so it, it struck a chord with me this morning just seeing it yeah no doubt um well, you know, I'm going to touch very quickly on this before we jump into one of these classifications, and that is we're talking about some seniors, but not high school seniors. You're going to be at e EIWAs this weekend yep. cheering on and and watching some of your former kids who are now seniors compete up there. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, yeah, we're going to go up to EIWAs. Obviously, a lot of people, you know, put Tampa prep and myself and Andy Bricker who coached there with Anthony Artelona. Right. And so yeah. um, he'll be trying to win his second EIWA title. One, one as a freshman, obviously being at Penn, they lost a couple COVID years, took a second last year to Yanni Diakamahalas and Slack. he'll be, yeah, he'll be in, the, <laughs> he'll be in the mix this year, but not only that, I'm excited to just see a lot of the Florida kids who are in EIWA. That'll be Malik Hines, Leo Tarantino, Jack Crook, um, just, Kind of the who's who of the last what 
five, 10 years of Florida wrestling. And so I'm excited to see all those guys, uh, you know, try to punch their ticket to Tulsa. All right. Yeah. So um, that's going to be exciting for you. I will be in Kissimmee. It's going to be a blast down there. Um, just so everybody knows, Jake and I are going to break down each of the brackets, but this is a general in intro that I'm going to then splice on top of us having a conversation about one of these groups. So um, if stick with us, if you tuned in for the girls, 1A, 2A, 3A, it will start in a second. Jake, you ready to get started on one of these? Let's rock, man. All right, man. All right, Jake, we are talking the girls. And, you know, were you in were you in Silver Spurs Arena last year for their first ever official state tournament? I was not. I was not. So I wasn't there for, for the first ever. Yeah, so it, it was special. You know, it was special to watch them compete on the same stage as the guys and, the, and, and everything else. Um, Orlando Freedom took the title. This year, according to kind of the state qualifiers and the you know, region champs and all that. It looks like it's going to be a, a race against, again, between Matanzas and Freedom and Osceola and a few others. We'll kind of get to that as we get to each of the brackets. Does that work for you? Perfect. All right. All right. So let's jump in at 100 pounds. And, you know, we've got um, the return of Kealoni Vega uh, from Osceola, who was out last year. Got Gohanna Martinez from Sepra Hills, Camden Elliott, Gracie Bradshaw. You got some really good wrestlers here at 100 pounds. But I will say, Keeloni Vega, I mean, if you've watched her compete nationally, has looked super and she's coming back. What 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 do you think about 100, the 100 pound bracket? I would agree. Um, I mean, she's a stud. Now, plain and simple. I mean, uh, I, I feel like Osceola was first. To the girls party in florida years ago right uh they were turning Cer out certainly huge. amongst them yeah definitely yeah yeah so i mean i just think she's just another one in the mix um coincidentally i actually i'm interested to see her first round match uh mm -hmm. with uh, Bo, um whose sisters at wyoming seminary was a two-time state champ in, in her own right um so i'm interested in obviously sophie's young but uh, she comes from a wrestling pedigree. You always wonder if some of those first round at young kind of probably doesn't have anything to lose either. Right. You know, you, you know who you're wrestling. And so that for a first round match, Vegas should win, but I'm just, I'm curious. So let's just, yeah, that. no, I, I think it's a, I think it's a great pick because now Vegas been there. It, it's always interesting that first round match, you know, because, you know, especially with people who haven't been in the arena before and they're not used to, the environment and all the mats and everything else. Obviously, if you come to the knockout, you, you've been on a similar type of situation. But, but you know, we're going to kind of come back to that idea. Is that something that you talked about with any of your kids who were first timers going in? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to have the conversation, right? That, you know, and you do your best as a coach, I think, to just tell them, hey, it's just another arena. But the reality of it is I've, I've been around long enough to know that sometimes – kids just clam up. I mean, they just clam up in there. I, I mean, it's just a different feel. It's not, it's not a local high school or anything like that. And especially, um, obviously, um, you know, I think some of these girls have traveled out of, out of state and, and to Fargo and to, and, and things like that. But, um, for some of these girls, this is the biggest arena they've ever been in, you know, right. and, and, and for some of these kids, boys as well, we'll get to that. But I mean, it can be a, sh I've seen it shell shock people just, just so much space. They see, you know, all these stands that it's just not normal, you know, and most times. Right. Right. Well, let's jump. So, uh, so would you agree with me that Kaylani Vega is the favorite at a hundred pounds, even though yeah. you are interested in that opening round match. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we're not going to make picks, which I'm cool with. Um, I actually like the favorite idea the the favorite walking in. And the reason I like that idea is because, Man, I wouldn't put money on any high school kid. No, no offense, but you know there's just so many things that get happen in a high school wrestling match, even with the top level talent and top level kids, that nobody is just sure thing. So I don't like to make predictions. I like to stick with the favorites. If that's cool with you, nah, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. All right, so let's jump to 105 pounds. We got Gabby Tedesco from Lake Gibson, uh, Adriana Barrientos from Oakley, make. Cotino, I, I think I said that right, Freedom. And I want to make sure I tell everybody this up front. I'm probably going to slaughter some names, so I I, I am so sorry <laughs> right up front. Um, 
and you know you got Reagan Thomas. You got a few others in that group. Gabby Tedesco, I think, is a returning state runner-up, though, as a result of that and wrestling for the boys. You know, at the 106-pound spot in a couple of situations, she looks like the favorite. What do you think? I think so. I mean, she won knockout, right? Won it kind of easy in my I was there. I mean, I felt like she sort of, uh, you know, had her way, you know, <laughs> throughout that tournament. Um, and, you know, she's been training with those like Gibson boys. They're just getting their girls program going. She's kind of leading the charge and um, having Bree come back and coach the girls. And so um, long story short, I mean, she's been wrestling anyone, anyone in that room. And I, I just think, you know, she, zero fear, you know, coming out of that Lake Gibson room and just going I, right into the tournament. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I also want to say, I, I said I was going to slaughter a bunch of people's names. Also, you guys should know that Jake and I, there is no way in the world we're going to say every person's name. We're going to really touch on the big things. I've asked Jake to kind of weigh in on really interesting matchups that are possible, who we think is the favorite, kind of getting through. But, you know, what? unless this is going to be like a four hour long conversation, there's no way in the world that we're going to be able to mention everybody's name. So, I, I just put that out there because somebody always sends me an email at Don't the hate end us. of the day. You Don't know what us. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving to 110, um, we've got Mariah Mills from Matanzas, who was third last year. Sigrin Metzger, Metzger from Crestview was sixth last year. You got uh, Ike, 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 Ike Gallivet yes. from North, North Miami. North Miami's got a good program down there. Um, definitely one to watch. You got Keanu Bush in there. You got some good ones. But you've got several state placers in the group. Um, and you have what's really interesting is you have a so Sophia Ferran from Mater Lakes who finished third in her region, it was a state runner up last year. So how does this all play out? I like Mills. Uh, I personally, yeah, I like Mills. I like Mills coming through. Obviously, that semites match uh with her in North Miami. Um Gulamet, so again, I'm gonna butcher names too. Gulamet, that's an interesting match in the semis. Um I personally like Mills coming through. All right. You know, what's interesting is looking at that, that list of, and everybody talking about it, Ferran and Metzger are both returning state placers. First round match, man. That's, that's, uh, that's something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So jump into what 15, you know, this is a really interesting one. And you, you and I were talking before we got on the, the recording, um, you were having a conversation with Brandt and I think Brandt, doesn't have Cameron Galvin as his number one ranked wrestler, yet she is the returning and defending state champ at this weight. But this weight's tough. I mean, Annalie Banyolos, um, Aaron Rizzuto, you got a little um, young Haley Motor in there. This is this is a very deep weight. Now, I agree. Um, anytime you see the name Motor, right? Yeah. You probably have your hands full a little bit, right? Uh She's just, you know, she's just like her brothers. They're, they're problems, you know? And, uh, <laughs> but that said, um, I like Galvin. I, I mean, I, I trust what those, um, Bush and Bush are doing over there in freedom Orlando. Right. I mean, they yep. just, um, uh, they got those girls rolling. I, I mean, and I just, I'd be hard pressed that she's not prepared, you know, and she, I, that's, that's my pick personally. So. Yeah, no, I I mean, I'm with you. I think that this is a, a debatable one with, I mean, I think uh, Brandt has Banyolos number one, Rizzuto number two, Galvin's further down. But man, you're the defending champ. That's got, that, 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 that says something, right? So, you know, I'm with you. I'm with you on the favorite. I actually think it's going to be Cameron Galvin as a favorite as well. All right, jump it up. Brandt probably keeps yeah, up go ahead. I was going to say, Brant probably knows better than us, but we're going to give it a shot, you know? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> we we probably should make that very clear right up front that Brant is probably the authority, and you yeah, and I yeah. are just talking wrestling because, you know what? He's busy writing away, and you and I want to just have a conversation. Right. And we decided to record it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, at 107, uh, 100, 120 pounds, um, uh, Rachel Silva from Somerset Academy was third last year. Christina Borgman was eighth last year. You had Abby D. D. Cinzenzo from Bell Creek who was fifth last year. You have other state placers in this group as well. Who stands out to you as a favorite in this group? I, I'm a ghost. I, I like Silva, man. I, I like Silva. I, I think uh, I think she probably <laughs> there's some people. She's tough, man. I just think she rips through the bracket. You know, I think she's she's nails. So. All right. Okay. I'm with you. Um, all right. 125 pounds. 
Jumping up, um, you've got Gabriella Caro from uh, Stoneman Douglas, who's a returning state runner-up. Christina Turner, who is fourth from Sarasota Military Academy. Kind of your neck of the woods. Um, and then you've got a returning state champion and Tiana Freeze, who took third and probably isn't your favorite coming in. But, man, she's already been to the top of the podium. How do, who do you think the favorite is at, uh, at, at this weight? So I, I think with some of these, right, what we're going to start seeing as as the girls pick up steam, right, um, some of them that win early on, right, when this thing first gets going and it's in the arena, you know, you might have a freshman or sophomore win it that might not win it again, you know, and, and that's not anything against them. It's just uh, it's going to get better. It's just going to keep getting better. It's going to get tougher and tougher to win a state title. It's going to get more depth and, and more girls. And you're seeing these teams grow. I mean, it's like the fastest growing sport. That said, um, I like Gabriella Caro. All right. All right. Well, just to give everybody a little hint in my fans guide, I also have Gabriella Caro. But that's just that's just me. Um, and we did and we didn't collaborate on that prior to this. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. We um yeah, so we're we're just having the conversation. So definitely not uh not collaborating at all. All right, so jumping up at 130 pounds. Um, again, we've got several states, uh, state placers on in the bracket. One of the things, and I didn't get to see it, but one of the things that stood out to me as far as results go was Brielle Bibla from Matanzas, who was a state runner-up last year. I think she lost to Juliana Diaz in the state finals. She lost to Ariana Gavier from Milton, and I think she lost 12-4 in, her, according to Track Wrestling. So that's really interesting. That puts Bibla as a, I think, a two or a three coming out of the, uh, a two coming out of the region. Yeah. She's going to be a challenge for some region champ somewhere along the line. So I just, I make mention of Bibla, but you, what you are, you're going to tell me who you think is the, the favorite of the group. I like Bibla. I, I think sometimes you take a loss in that region tournament and it wakes you up a little bit, you know? And so um, I also like that she's got 37 matches. It's, it's a lot of mat time this year, you know? And so um, even though uh, you said Guevara, Gav is that, is that beat I think her? that's how you say it. Yeah. And I think yeah. she beat her. Yeah. I mean, you know, she's seven to no, I mean, and, and, and beat Bibla along the way. I just, Listen, I think mat time matters unless you've been hurt all year and, and you get healthy. I, I think, I mean, even then I think it matters. And so, um, well, well, and if you look at the bracket, right, if you gets a really good Kayla De, De Leon, especially in the quarters, potentially Keelani Mack and, you know, Guadiniana uh, down at the bottom and to, in the semis potentially. So, you know, the path isn't easy for anyone. No. Same thing could be said for Bibla, who's got a really good Ka Kaylee Alfieri uh, from Gulf, oh, potentially yeah. in the in the quarters as well. So I guess if I'm trying, if you and I are sitting next to each other and we're getting ready for the quarters, we're sitting in Silver Spurs Arena. This is a weight class at 130 pounds. I might be really interested in watching the quarters because there should be some really good matches here. I I love you know that. Uh that one versus two, like the, whoever's coming out of that quarter, you know, that quarter match and they get the knock off the region champ. I, those matchups are, are the most fun. You, you try, usually it's that, that tough region, right? Everyone's yeah. pretty good. And then they come through and just knock off someone who hasn't lost or lost much throughout the year. And I mean, we see it, you will see it up and down the boys bracket. We're going to see it throughout the girls as well. So one thing I'm going to say before we jump to 135, and that is, I mentioned before seven there. Well, in the girls bracket, there are 17 seniors who have been on the podium who have yet to claim a state title. Bibla is one of those. Like you said, been there, done that, that that's got to pl play a huge role in this situation. Yep. So anyway, jumped into 135 pounds. You got returning state champ, Gabby Perez, who I think she was at treasure coast last year. She's now at Fort Pierce central. You got Aubriana Apple, You've got some really good wrestlers in this group, but man, if you watch Gabby Perez compete, you got to be pretty impressed with with her. I think she'll be a uh, two time state champ after this, you know. Or I, I, she's just won it once. Yeah, well, and I mean, 
last year was the only really right, official right. one. So Usually. that's what I'm going off of. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. I think she'll be two time uh, state champ uh, Gabby Perez after this. Yeah. Well, in, in region four last week, I don't think she gave up a point. I mean, so that's, that's pretty stout, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. 140 pounds is to me the most interesting potential rematch. And I'm not going to discount everybody else in the bracket, but the last year, Olivia Ritchie beat Sophia Delgado in the finals. And Sophia has been all over the place competing. I've watched Olivia compete in a couple of different places. Man, who is the favorite between those two? And they're going to meet in the semis too, right? Is that, do they? They are going to meet in the semis. You're yeah. right. So oh, even... man, I wish that was going to be the finals. <laughs> I think I've got to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, one of them. You know, one was not even making it to the finals, right? So, uh, if, if um, ah, man, I'll go Delgado. Okay. You know, I'll go, I'll go is, Del there, is there a reason why? What? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean, you're talking. I think they're the two best, right? And you could probably coin flip it at this point. And so, um, yeah. And I don't know that they wrestled each other this year, so. And I, I know that this is folk style. For me, Delgado is also the favorite. But the reason the reason I ask that is, for me, I think it's, you know, Sophia, I saw her in Fargo. Yeah. I've seen her compete in a lot of different places and, and things like that. I know it's freestyle versus folk style. But, man, mat time matters, in, like you said before. I, I mean, you know, if you're going to Fargo – you know, I, I, I think all that, all that adds up at some point, you know, I just, yeah. I mean, especially if you win some matches out there and you just gain that experience and, um, you know, Delgado is well, she's well-traveled, you know, just, just goes everywhere, wrestles anyone. Um, I believe she won knockout too, if I recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. So, so let me ask you this question as it relates to Richie and Delgado. Do you want to be the wrestler who has the win first or the one coming back through for in the rematch and who had lost previously from, I mean, I, I guess from a coach's perspective. Yeah. I mean, I, what I was saying is I think we've been on both sides of it, right. Where you've been, we've been the one who got the one either in some cases, even at like regionals, right. The weekend right. before, um, And then I've been with like a guy like Conrad where we lost to Cone like three times in a row and then beat him at the state tournament, right? Right, and, and right. So, so um, I don't know. I, I think every kid is different, right? Uh, with with a kid like Conrad, I never had any doubt he was going to lose to Cone at the state tournament because in his case, every time he showed up there, he won a state title. And so I just felt good that we got there, we were going to win. Um, I don't. And maybe that's the same thing you can say for Richie. I mean, yeah. she has the win on the big stage, you know? So right. anyway, for all the fans out there, that's a definitely a match you do need to tune in and watch. Right. It's semis too, early. Yeah, early yeah, semis. yeah, semis, which I don't even want to get into the discussion <laughs> as it relates to Florida and seeding and all that because we'll be here all night. All right, 155 pounds. We had the returning and defending state champ who was a freshman last year and Maya Bethel from North Miami, who is in the bracket. Megan Preston is a returning state runner-up. Lily Luttrell is a returning state runner-up. There's a lot of returning state players in the bracket, but Bethel won it a year ago. Is that, what weight? 155? Did I jump one? Yeah, you skipped 45. Darn. All right. So, yeah. so do one, 155 for me real quick, and then we'll gotcha. go to 145. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Since uh, I already gave the, the lead up. You're good. I like Bethel. I like Bethel. So keep it simple. Uh, North Miami, again, just they're doing a good job down there. They are. I, I just figure she's 23-0. and 0, Not much is going to change. I see, you know, 27-0 and 0 when it's all said and done. All right. So I apologize to the 145-pounders. We'll jump back to you. My, my fault. I'm trying to scroll as I look at this, and you can tell Jake's looking to, to his side, so we're trying to keep it all in straight, all straight. At 145, um, you got Jenna Mustafa from Lake Wales, Catherine Stewart from Barter Trail. You got a Kendall Bibla in there who was fifth last year at 130. Those are all returning state placers. There's a lot of state placers in this group. I don't know that there's a returning state 
like finalist in the group though. So that means a lot of people who have been on the podium, but not necessarily who's been on to the big stage in the finals match. Who uh, who looks good to you as the favorite? So my little dark horse is right okay. here from Hillsborough County, and that's Rosado, East Bay. Okay. She's just been figuring out ways to win, uh, 13 and 0 on the year. Um, mm -hmm. so keep an eye on that little dark horse there. Uh, kind of like, Hey, don't be surprised. Right. Okay. One of the, um, yeah, yeah. I love dark, dark horse picks. Yep. Um, I mean, she won the region too, so I don't know how much of a dark horse that is, but, um, yeah. you know, I, it was a name that wasn't mentioned. So, um, well, and I, I don't think she has a returning i mean she wasn't a returning right. she's not a returning state place or like there seems yeah. to be a lot of others in the field um that said are you gonna take rosado as a favorite i'll go mustafa mustafa okay. yeah I, I feel like if rosado gets to there i just think she's gonna win the entire thing but i like mustafa winning it winning it overall all right so let's jump now to 170 i apologize again for being out of order and 170 is one of the few weights where we don't have really a whole lot of people who are returning to state placers. For much of the bracket, I, in fact, I think like 13 of the 16 wrestlers in the bracket, I, they might be pretty new to the arena. Now, Lily Yambor from uh, Gateway was fourth last year, but she took fourth in her region. So that leaves Grace Leota from Hernando, Cadence Lyons, Laney Driggett's. Lanny Clayton, so on and so forth. None of them placed a year ago. I don't know how many of them even qualified a year ago. So this one seems wide open to me. I agree. Um, I'll, I'll go Grace Leota from her endo. And you know what? It's always good to lean back on Brant Parsons because I think he has her ranked number one or number two. And and he would know, I, I would think. <laughs> For me, I, I like 31 and 0 a little bit more than like 19 and 0, you know. Uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at it. That extra mat time, it matters, you know. And I, I know Pritz and those guys up in Hernando, they do a good job as well. So um Yeah. So yeah. All right. So let's jump to 190, where we've got um several different placers uh returning, but probably the one that stands out to me, and and I'll pick my favorite would be Cheyenne Cruz from Middleburg. Um she was fourth a year ago at this weight um and she's also a i think she was a fargo all-american in both 16 years and juniors this past year so um disagree with me or are you gonna i like cruz okay all right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right and last but not least 235 pounds um again this is a weight that there's not a whole lot of returning state placers we do have cheyenne wigley who's a returning state placer Naya Herbin from Jefferson, which is, again, your neck of the woods, um, who was fourth a year ago. Neither of them won a region title, though. So who stands out as the favorite here? And just to throw it out there, I think Yoseline Perez from South Dade uh, won knockout. Now, how deep was the knockout at 235 and all that, I don't know. But that is something to keep in mind, I would think. Well, I think, though... So could be wrong did did she knock off claremont from freedom orlando at knockout i don't know i don't know off the top of my head i think so or uh, i can't okay remember. yeah so i'm gonna go perez i'm gonna go perez i'm gonna listen i think knockout you win knockout you're usually in a good spot to to do well at the state tournament there's very few that uh you know regardless boys girls if you win knockout i i like I like your your chances of, of making a deep run at the state tournament. All right. So that is the girls from 100 to 235. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is the team race. Orlando Freedom, they were champs a year ago. And I know you don't have this information in front of you, so I'm going to give it to you, Jake. So you got, you got, they have nine qualifiers, two champs, three runners up, three who were third. Matanzas has 10 qualifiers two who were champs, three who were second, four who were third. Osceola is the next greatest or most qualifiers with six. When I talk about the state tournament and as far as a team race, it always it always helps to have more people there. Yeah. And then getting them on the podium. So which of those kind of 
which do you kind of lean to? They're both kind of look almost identical, except Freedom comes in with two fewer wrestlers than Matanzas. Is that the difference? It's going to be super close, right? Really close. I think Freedom finds a way to get it done. They're my, okay. they're my pick. I think they find a way to get it done. Um, I love what they're doing up there at, at Matanzas as well. But I just got this feeling, you know, sometimes, right, I got a feeling – the Bush brothers and all those guys, they're going to have everyone coached up on every point matters. You know, they'll be going for majors. So every, every half point matters, every advance I, matters. Um, I, we always used to take a small group from Tampa prep. And when, and when we were trying to uh, be state runner ups and things like that, every point mattered. And, and we made sure, I mean, we got a minute left and we were three points away from a tech You're We were trying to go for it, you know? And so, uh, I'm going to go Freedom Orlando. Two fewer wrestlers, but finds a way to get it done. All right. Well, Jake, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, enjoy your trip up northeast, and um, we'll be watching the girls, and we will all let you know where you got it wrong. And <laughs> you know what? Sure. Everybody can tell me <laughs> to. You know what? We do this because we like to talk about it, and honestly, the more we can talk about wrestling and the more people who are engaged, the better, right? Hell yeah, man. I agree. <laughs> All right, man. You have a safe trip. Appreciate it. Thank you. Peace.